Hello, this is Gwydion, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Azio Link Pro along with Azio for All in a simple VST host called Pedalboard 2 in order to apply effects onto your mic. In my case, I'm going to use a noise uh, gate and also a noise reduction tool that I like to use. And you can use any VST host you want. Um, I'll do some other videos showing some other options that I've used that I like. But in this one, I wanted to keep it very simple. So I have Azio Link Pro up here. And if you haven't watched my initial video on setting this up, I encourage you to watch that. And I'll link that video here. I have the sample rate set here for 48,000 hertz and 128 sample buffer size. And then I've set, although you can set these up to 64 channels in and 64 out, I've got four in and four out because that's all I need. So my four in correspond to this ASIO host in mix, these four. My four out correspond to these four ASIO driver out mix. Okay, I'm gonna open my ASIO driver because I wanna show you how I have that set up. So the way this works is ASIO for all, um, the numbering schema is basically vertical. So it starts from the top and goes down. What I mean by that is if you think about your inputs and outputs, whatever you have toggled on first. So in this case, I have real tech, but the first thing I really have turned on is the output. I, I do not have the input connected at all, even though that's on, because this isn't on, none of this is connected. The only thing connected is my output. So I've got my real tech output, output connected to my headset. So that corresponds to the driver out mix here, one and two. So anything that I want to hear, I'm going to route to these two. That's important. And I'll explain that a bit more later. The only microphone I have set up is I have my Yeti Nano driver and I have the in connected to the 48 hertz here. I want everything at 48 hertz, 48,000, excuse me. Um, so what that is going to correspond to is going to be the ASIO driver in, okay? And I'll show you that. So that's gonna be my ASIO driver and I only have two, one and two for my left and right. Okay, I've already got pedal board open because I already have this set up and I wanna show you, if you don't recall from the last video or didn't watch it, um, if you enable this multi-client section here, you can set up an entirely separate ASIO link instance for whatever VST host that you open. So once you download and open Pedalboard, and I'll open it to show you for a second. So I'm opening this. When you first open this, this will all be blank, but I wanted you to hear me, so I have it set up. But when you open this, you'll get another instance of ASIO link Pro, and it'll look something like this. Okay, so you see how my top instance here just says ASIO link tool and this one says pedal board to my 64 bit version so you can see as soon as i opened it because i have it routed you can see all of the um, volume meters going up and down so let me explain that so again we talked before about my ASIO driver in is my yeti mic and you saw that in the ASIO control panel Okay, so that goes into the ASIO host mix. So I just literally left click and drag down to connect these two. So now it's going into my ASIO host mix. Now I'll show you by going into pedal board, how do I get it out? What does that look like? So I am gonna open my audio settings to show you briefly how to get this set up. Okay, so we'll come back to this in a second, but when you open pedal board first, you're going to want to set up the ASIO device and the, sorry, the ASIO um, audio device type is ASIO. The device will be ASIO link pro. Okay. Then you can see, remember the four channels we have over here and you can see I have four output and four input channels. So I have grayed out and this will be important. Remember when I told you that my, my um, headset is actually connected to ASIO driver out one and two. So I've connected in pedal board three and four. So my output three and four is over here because I don't want it going directly to my headset. I want it separate because then I'm gonna send that signal and, then, and you're hearing it because I'm sending it out through OBS, but I could send it into Discord or wherever I want. 
So I've got three and four out here, and then I've got my inputs are um, one and two, and this is the ASIO host input mix. So basically I'm sending my mic into the ASIO host, which is pedal board, and then whatever I do here and whatever I mix will then be sent out through the mix. And then again, if I wanna broadcast that mix out, I'm gonna send it out through these channels down here. And again, these are similar to voice meter virtual outputs. Think of like B1, B2 in voice meter, if you're familiar with that program. And I've connected this to the outmix 2, which is how you're hearing me. That's what OBS is picking up. Okay, let's go back for a second. I wanna close this to declutter this. But I will say before I close this, my main um, ASIO link here, I wanted to show you this again is how I'm hearing sound. If I want to hear desktop sounds, if I want to hear sounds from Discord, I've got all these connected to separate playback devices. But again, you can hear when, my, or you can see when I'm talking, it's going through this out mix and then out here. So meaning I wouldn't, I don't want to mix it with all the sounds that I would hear from my desktop. And if I had it going out through one and two, you'd hear everything, my desktop sounds, everything. And I don't want that for this recording. Okay. So let's go back out for a second to this pedal board. So you've got, you've got all this. We talked through this. You've got the sample rate that should be just defaulted at 48,000 hertz and the buffer size, again, 128. And that's straight out of ASIO for all. So that's perfect. Now, the other thing you need to do is you need to build a plugin list. Okay, so what a plugin list is basically, and I think there's another section, edit, plugin list. No, that's right. So when you pull this up, it'll... Usually it'll, it'll be blank when you open it, but you can click on options, scan for new or updated VST plugins. So whatever plugins you have already, or if you need to go download them, and I'll, I'll give you some download links in the video below, but um, you should usually put them into this program Steinberg VST plugins, or um, I also have a programs VST plugin file. So this will scan both of these folders. So make sure that you have them in these folders or you can hit the plus sign and actually ask it to search in other folders. Okay, and then you'll hit scan. Once you hit scan, all of the plugins you have will be available over here, okay? You'll see some of these I have duplicates and that's because I have them in each folder. So don't worry about that. So now you're good to go. Now let's look at, you'll start with these three um, sections and then you'll have an audio output. You will not have anything in here. And what this is showing you is input one and two. So again, let's go back to audio settings. So that's my input one and two here. I've grayed out three and four. I don't need it. I just want my mic in because remember my mic is one and two. Now, once we connect these plugins, the output, it might get a little confusing because you'll say, wait a second, that should be three and four. It is, I've grayed out one and two and the way pedal board works, it's just gonna show your first and second output as whatever options you've selected down here. Like if I click the... Okay, you didn't hear me for a second because it showed those, but then it connected me to one and two, but because I only have three and four connected, that actually is my first and second output. That, that part is a little bit confusing, I apologize. Okay, so in order to set up a plugin, you double click anywhere on this um, canvas, and then you're gonna select whatever pl pr plugin you want. So if I selected LoudMax as an example, then you would just simply left click, drag and drop to make a connection here. And you'd left click, drag and drop to make a connection here, which is what I've done to connect this Rhea gate. And then you will connect Rhea gate. If you wanna daisy chain these and do more than one, then you'll connect it to the next program. So in my mind, if you only wanted a gate, you could connect these two to the main inputs here. Then you could send them out and then straight to this audio output and you've had a full connection. You always have to make sure this whole connection connects to an audio output or it's not gonna go anywhere. It's not connected to anything. 
this Lieber noise that I will send you a link to, or I'll, I'll put a link below to, this is my favorite um, noise suppression program. So whereas this is just a straight up gate, which will cut off noise, this is noise suppression that is smart and it'll look, it'll listen for like um, uh, background noise, keyboard strokes. So just for a second, I'm going to bypass these. So the way you bypass them is to turn off by clicking this B button. So I'm going to turn them both off. So now if I stop talking, you're going to hear some hiss and a little bit of background noise. So let me stop talking for a second. So I don't want to hear anything there. So if I click on these again, and I'm going to stop talking, but then you shouldn't hear any of that background noise. Give me one second. Okay, so now it's working. You shouldn't hear anything. Now, to open these, you hear this is the plugin editor, and it opened on the other screen, but this is how I have my gate set up. And then this Libra noise is really just a set and forget. Once you connect it, it does what it needs to. Now, you will notice, unlike a lot of plugins, this just has one input and output. So I basically just connected both the left and right into that one channel, and then I, I connected two to make sure this goes out to the left and right channel of the output. So the only thing you really would have to do if you use what I'm using is you would set up your gate. I have other videos that I can link to that show why I set things up the way I have. But basically, I've got my gate set up to where it's just below if I start stop talking. You can see it's a little bit below that. So, and then I also, I'll explain in another video why I set these the way I've done, but that's it. So whatever plugins you want to use or however you want to use, um, you manipulate your voice or what have you, it's as simple as that with uh, Azio Link Pro. So I hope this video was very helpful for you. And if it was, please hit the like button and I'll be doing a lot more of these. So if you have any other suggestions on what you want to see next, let me know. Thanks for watching.